Hello. Oh, sorry about that. One second here. <clears throat> Hello. Uh huh. Uh huh. Who is this? You're gonna do what to me? Whipped cream. Oh no, no, I don't. I don't do nose play. No, that's a kink I, I'm not on board with. Sorry. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Well, listen. I gotta go. I'm doing a thing. Um. So, uh, maybe call me later, or what's that? What do you mean I'm not using a cell phone? How do you know? H hello? Bitch hung up on me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, hello, true scarer or crimer -er 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 So this is a spooky true story that happened in 2007. This is the story of the cell phone stalker. Viewer discretion is advised. How do you even put it in? How would you even put it in my nose? How would it fit? Oh, so I gotta go again. Sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, no. Yeah. Smell you later. All right. Sorry about that. So this case occurred in Fircrest, Washington, way back in 2007, back when we were still using flip phones and Blackberries and stuff like that. Some of us were probably still using Zach Morris phones. All right. Because not all of us were super wealthy. We couldn't afford a cell phone, which cost $17 back then. And that was a lot of money for 2007. That was like $3 million today. Some, maybe, I don't, math isn't my strong suit. So the story begins with a teenager named Courtney Kuykendall. So initially she starts to get text messages on her phone from friends and the friends are asking her, why are you sending us these derogatory like one word texts? Some of them were getting messages that just said gay. And they were coming from what they knew as Courtney's phone number. Courtney was like, well, I didn't send those, uh, so I, I don't know. Uh, but then they kind of just said, that, Ugh, whatever, it's just one of those weird things. Within a few days, Courtney, her entire family, and several of her friends all began to get very threatening text messages from someone that they did not know. Not only were they getting text messages, they were getting phone calls from this unknown individual. The phone number and the text messages and the calls were coming from something that it just, the number just said restricted. So they ended up calling this person restricted. That's really the name they gave him. This person would call and say like Courtney or a family member would answer the phone. And this person using kind of like this, obviously like creepy voice, but kind of the person was changing their voice it sounded like to them. But they would say things like, you know, I'm gonna kill you. If you hang up the phone, I'm gonna kill you. Don't hang up the phone again or I'll kill you. They were, they were threatening things about, I'm gonna rape you, like really horrific things this person was saying to them. The caller would threaten one of their animals, said, I'll kill your dog. And then they left a voicemail one time about saying how they're going to shoot up a school, which was this voicemail. And it's a very disturbing voice, uh, and it's it's really kind of hard to pinpoint if that's a male voice or a female voice, but it definitely sounds like someone who is trying to disguise their actual voice. But the calls and the texts just kept coming and coming. It was just like rapid fire going to all of these people, not only Courtney and her family, but just all of her, the people in her circle of friends. Eventually, Courtney and her family, they all get new cell phone numbers because the harassment was so extreme that they had no choice, but it didn't matter to this restricted person because they would immediately start getting text messages and calls, all of them, to their new numbers. Eventually, they start to just have their cell phones completely turned off, and that way they can't get texts or phone calls. 
But this was also back at a time when most households still had landline phones. So at the Kaikendal house, their phone would ring. And it was their stalker on the other end calling their landline number, which they then changed that number. The stalker found out the number and called back. It got so scary, uh, obviously at this point, it means already beyond scary, but they got the police involved. They said, listen, something's happening. Someone is calling us. They're threatening to kill us. They're threatening to murder our animals. They're threatening to rape us. This person is saying they're gonna shoot up in a school. They're gonna kill a bunch of people. They're saying, don't hang up the phone. We're gonna kill you if you hang up the phone. Like, it's a nightmare. And so while they're talking to police, all of a sudden, all of their cell phones, the families, begin to ring. And somehow, some way, their phones were calling each other. No one can really explain exactly how that happened, but there was no one really on the other end. Then police decided they're gonna look into this and they would, con would contact the cell providers, the, the phone companies the family was using, and they found out where these texts and calls were originating from. They were all originating from Courtney Kuykendall's phone, her cell phone. But there was times when text messages, and they can confirm this, when text messages and calls were going to like friends from this restricted number from which they would link back to Courtney's phone. But it was during a time when Courtney's phone was turned off. And so what they initially really kind of thought was, okay, someone is masking her phone number, which is not something completely out of the ordinary. I mean, not something you see often, but it is something that you could do. You could mask a person's phone and make talk calls and texts from that phone without having the actual phone. And so, but there was like, like that point where everyone was kind of looking suspiciously at Courtney, like oh, she's doing all of this, but then, after digging further and further into this, they're like, there's just, there were times where there was just no way it came from her because the, her phone was off or her phone was at home when no one else was there. And so it was just like, it was not completely making sense that Courtney was doing this. Then one day they go to back to police to kind of get an update and, and talk further about the situation. When they got home on their answering machine, there was a a message. The message was literally the conversation the family had with the police at the police station. It had been recorded and then it was sent to their, and someone called the house and left that voicemail. At that point, Courtney's parents were like, okay, Courtney, it's not how you're doing this because how else could that have happened? Uh, so they took her phone away from her and they confiscated it, turned it off. She had absolutely no access to that phone anymore but the calls and the text messages continued to happen. The family at that point, once they realized that Courtney wasn't doing this, would end up installing a security system in their house, an alarm system. And once they had it installed, they programmed the uh, alarm code. They then get a phone call. Um, phone call is from the stalker saying, I know the code you use for your alarm system. And they told them what their code was. The stalker told the family, like, I know what it is. Now, mind you, Courtney is there in the house and she's not making that phone call. She's not the one talking to them. So they know it's not her, but it was now evidence that not only was this person just texting and calling from wherever the hell they were, now it was evidence that this stalker was really close to their house. Like uh, close enough that they could see them enter in a code. They were all, the caller would also say things about the clothing they were wearing at the time they're, they were talking on the phone, talking about what, you know, you know, patterns or some stuff like that was on their shirts. One time they had a friend over and the friend was in their kitchen helping them cook and the friend was cutting up some limes when all of a sudden a phone call comes in. It's from the stalker. The stalker tells them, I prefer lemons. It then really became extra scary when one night they were trying to go to bed at their house when someone started to bang on the side walls of their home. Someone was going around the house and just banging everywhere. But by the time the one of the family members goes out, there's nobody there. This was just a person who knew personal details about this family and about the family's friends. 
police have never been able to identify exactly who was making these phone calls and who was sending these texts. They were never able to trace it back to anyone. They were completely just stunned and baffled by who was doing this, how they were doing it, and why they were doing it. Nobody was ever physically harmed. Nobody was ever attacked by anyone. The closest it ever came to was that person banging on the side walls of the Kaikendall house. There are theories like this was all a hoax, that Courtney somehow orchestrated all of this since it originated with her. Originally, her friends were getting text messages that were confirmed from like her cell phone. It wasn't from like a restricted number. Um, then it eventually became the person was calling and texting from a restricted number. But there were occasions where they were getting phone calls and texts where they were staring directly at Courtney and they obviously knew it wasn't her making these phone calls because she was there in front of them. She is adamantly denied ever having responsibility to being involved in this. Um, she said, why would I ever do that to my friends and my family? I love them. Why would I harass them? Why would I threaten to kill them? Why on God's green earth would I threaten to rape them? And why would I threaten to shoot up a school? For what? Some people say, well, just to get attention. Teenage girl wants attention. She wants to be on the news. Sure, I can understand that. But the physical evidence just didn't point to her being the one to do this. Could she have been doing this with somebody else? Sure. But they never found anybody else. They never found anyone. The other question that people kind of ask now is, was this technologically thing that they could have done like in terms of hacking and masking phones and all that back in 2007. Was that something that could have been done? Well, yes, it's not something that most regular folk would be able to do. There was apparently like military grade technology that was able to do something like this. And as a matter of fact, the family lived really close to a military base. And as a matter of fact, I think someone Courtney's brother-in-law, I think, was uh, stationed at that base. This was the McCord Air Force Base, and I would text the brother-in-law from this restricted number when he was at home, that it said, and the text message just said, McCord needs us. Law enforcement has even suggested this could have just been some tech-savvy teenager who just really knew what they were doing. But exactly how were they doing it? It's, and it's not really known. They could have had inside help. Maybe one of the friends uh, involved who was getting these texts, maybe somehow they, they were on the inside and they were kind of orchestrating this with this other person on the outside. But for what reason is the other thing. It's like, is it just for fun? Were they doing this just for kicks? Uh, it seems so weird to do to people, to a whole family. Some people have questioned the family, like, well, how come you continue to just use those cell phones, like phones? Like, why don't you just completely just turn them off, deactivate them, and get rid of them completely, and just rely on other means of communication? They tried. They did turn off their phones from time to time, and they didn't answer their phones all the time. But at the same time, you're like, these are still humans who need to communicate to one another about actual everyday things, you know, like, hey, I'm going to be late or I need a ride to school or something. You couldn't just completely shut it off because of the stalker. But also the stalker knew their landline number and called them there and left voicemails. But they couldn't stop their lives because of this. This is terrifying and scary. It's unknown. It's a mystery. But also we need to do our actual life stuff too. Nobody has ever come forward to confess. Nobody has ever provided tips to police with regards to, I think it might be this person or that person. There's been absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden, now there's rumors that the FBI eventually became involved in this. And then once that happened, everything stopped. That's just a rumor. But at one point, whether it was the FBI getting involved or not, uh, at one point, the, it, everything just completely was dead. It just completely stopped. Never happened again. And by all accounts, there's really not much of an update on this story, unfortunately. But by all accounts, there has been no more harassment to this family or this circle of people who this was involved with. Never again. So as mysteriously and suddenly as it started, it suddenly and mysteriously stopped. Is that because somebody was getting too close to finding out who was doing it and the person just didn't want to get in trouble? 
Or was this just another creepy aspect to this of like, I can do this whenever I want and I can stop whenever I want, but then you have to live in fear because it might suddenly start happening again. Nowadays, you know, these, these things aren't as likely to go unsolved because of our cell phones are much more advanced, obviously. We, the technology to trace and all that is way more advanced than we had back in 2007. And so you don't see much of this happening anymore. At least not going unsolved. That doesn't really happen. But ultimately, I just thought it was a creepy story. I mean, I mean it's just unsettling. Could you imagine your phone ringing and some mysterious voice saying, you know, you know, I'm going to rape you or I'm going to slit your throat or don't hang up the phone or I'll kill you. I'm going to shoot up this school. Like imagine getting voicemails at your home with a recording of you talking to police. Like that's creepy and terrifying as shit. Like, no thanks. I'll, I don't need that to happen to me. I'm good. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think this was real? Was it a hoax? I mean, it, it, it happened. It's just, do you think it was something that was being done internally for attention? Or was this a stalker, an unknown individual who was just hell-bent on terrifying this family? Or was it someone kind of close to the family who was just wanting to mess with them in a really horrendous, evil way? I'm not really sure. And honestly, I like the mystery aspect to it. I do. I like the fact that it's not solved. Because nobody was hurt. Nobody was killed. So ultimately, because of that, it's kind of like, eh, I'm kind of cool with this just not being known, you know? I don't know. It's, it's, it's just interesting to have stories like this. But, I mean, that's it. That's the that's, that's this story. So I just wanted to share it with y'all because I thought it was creepy. And this is my week of, of spooky videos. So it just sort of fell in line. But that is it for this video. Uh, true crime, a Rooney Dooney Dingleberry Dongs. Hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you are new here, my name is Mike. I typically tell true crime stories um, on this page with the occasional spooky story, but I've been telling spooky stories this week. But feel free to subscribe and give the video a like so more people can see it. Uh, you can also follow me over on TikTok. I have a couple of different TikTok pages. Um, they are linked over on my in my link tree below in the description below. The links to my TikToks also pop up here in the corner at some point in the beginning and at the end of the video. Also in that link tree below, you'll see my merch store. We have like t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that. We do ship all over the world, so feel free to check that out. Too. And then if there's a case you want me to cover, like a true crime case or some kind of spooky story or haunted story or alien story or whatever story, uh, just send me that information to my email. My email is listed below. Just send me a really quick email with like the name of the case, where it happened, when it happened, that kind of thing. And then I'll add it to the list. The list is 6,300 names long. I can't promise you when I'll cover that, but I will eventually. But that is it for this video. So we shall see you for the next video, which shall be tomorrow, probably, maybe, sort of. Depending on when you see this, you might see this on a day where there is no tomorrow. I don't know what that meant. Maybe the world explodes tomorrow and you just, you, there won't be a video because the world exploded. Yeah, I don't know either. Okay.